Hello everyone, the first lecture is abstract translation. The second half of the 20th century has seen the in-depth study of translation, which is sometimes called theory of translation, science of translation, translation linguistics, or even transitology. It has been claimed abroad that translation studies began in 1972 with Holmes's paper presented at the Third International Congress of Applied Linguistics. The name and nature of translation studies, however, unfortunately, European and American schools seem to have been unaware of achievements of the Russian School of Translation Studies. Works by Commissars, Schweitzer, and Fyodorov, and many others confirm the study of translation studies as a discipline of its own even in the 1950s. Abstract translation is a type of translation that compresses the main content of the source text in one language by means of another translating language. On the one hand, abstract translation is a form of abstracting and semantic deduction of the text. On the other hand, it fits the definition of translation as a transmission of information contained in a particular work by means of another language. In abstract translation, the leading language transformation is transduction. The relationship between translation and abstracting. The basis of both is in access to understanding of a foreign text. A guarantee of this understanding can be the translation of the entire origin, or at least the most complex and difficult to translate parts of it. The reference has a more complex task, and it is necessary to resort to generalizations on counts. A foreign literature reference must first of all be highly qualified translation. The selection of such formulations in the text that can be considered a generalization of the topic, the main idea, the main arguments is carried out only at the level of the entire text as a whole, i.e. only through acquaintance with the entire text will help to find the correct generalization. Translation of such generalizations should be carried out at the level of the entire referred text. It is necessary to check with the translation of this wording corresponds to the content of the entire text as a whole and only then include it in the abstract. The abstract part itself can be divided into the following elements. The first, a personal document containing information about the authors, indicating the place of work, position, academic title, previously published works, etc. The second, purpose of the referred work. The third, the research techniques and methods widely known, just mentioned. Fourth, main content and construction logic. Fifth, Conclusions and possible applications of the results noted by the author. The specific literary form of the abstract is characterized by strict consistency of presentation, maximum consistency and accuracy of language. Terms and the correct choice play a special role in this process. New little known terms should be explained and a foreign language version should be given and parenthesis. The dictionary version of the term is not always suitable in, in translation. The recommended abbreviation of the original is usually set in advance. We consider three or four times compression acceptable for texts that do not exceed 500 words. For texts of 2,000 uh, to 3,000 words or more, we provide abstracts with the number of sentences 
corresponding or to the number of subtexts, subtopics, or subjects of the second rank. Thus, the FDH volume of an academic abstract is from 50 to 100 words, 10 to 15 sentences. Principle of matching the volume of the abstract by the number of proposals to the number of subjects of the first and second ranks, in our opinion, can be considered universal when reviewing a text of any length. The topic of the entire work can be divided into large subtopics, subjects of the second order, and their number does not exceed. As a rule, the number of subjects of the second rank in a material of incomparably smaller volume, for example, in a text of about 1000 words. Translation couldn't have developed without culture. Literature, science, and philosophy influence translators' conceptualizations. On the other hand, culture couldn't have developed without translation, since translations enrich in nations with the cultural values of other nations. Reflection and creativity in translation. Translation reflects the source text, but it doesn't copy it. To translate adequately, translator must do his or her best to find proper means of expression. Translator bears in mind that the receptor has a cultural background other than that a receptor of, of the original text. Therefore, she or he has to be very resourceful in producing the same effect upon the receptor as that of the source text. Special problems arise in translating dialects for foreign speech, puns, poetry, etc. And a translator is in constant search for new tools to solve translation problems. As we subtracting abstract translation involves a selective approach to determining the source level of the content components of the source text. In the course of identifying the main meaning of communication, blocks of a higher level than a sentence, full sentence and paragraphs may be omitted along with individual words or phrases. Selecting key fragments, complete or pedal paragraphing of a part of selected key fragments. Generalization of semantic parts of the reviewed text and their transduction in the target language. Presentation of the resulting series of transductors final text, provided that the final text continues trans translational elements suggested by the logic of thought development. Thank you for your attention.